Hey people, it's Noel Powell with CreationEffects.com and this is the tutorial for using Terra to create your own high quality animations of Earth in space. Terra is an After Effects template with a lot of features and customization options, so I'm going to go over all of those in this video. Uh, in a nutshell, this template features a high resolution Earth and Moon and you can customize all the different elements separately using slider controls. So the land in the daylight, the land at night, the lighting, the ocean, the clouds, and the atmosphere. It has a 360 degree star background and you can choose which star image to use. Uh, it has automatic lighting so you can move your sun and the lighting on the earth and moon will update. And you can choose from multiple lens flares to attach to your sun. So a lot to go over. And I should mention this template follows the recent release of Solaris which is similar, but that one lets you create awesome sun animations that are very realistic because it uses real footage elements of the sun from NASA. And both Terra and Solaris will be included in the update of the Space Effects collection, which is just a huge collection of space effects. So it will have all the planets and black holes and galaxies and nebulas. Uh, so you can look for that coming soon. Uh, it's an old template that has always been popular and I'm just working on updating it and making it better. Um, I might call it something else. Uh, we'll see. My Latin is a little rusty, but uh, I hope to come up with something better than space effects. Okay, uh, if you don't have the template yet, you can get it if you follow the link in the description. And let me show you how to open the zip file so that you don't get any errors in After Effects. In Windows, right click and look for the Extract All option. Or on a Mac, just double click it. And then if you're up to date with After Effects, open the terra.aep file. Or if you're using a version from 2020 through 2023, open this older project here. And then once it's open, you'll see some instructions here for getting started. And uh, to create a new animation, just open the Earth 32 megapixel comp here. This should be plenty of resolution for most Earth animations. Uh, the texture maps are 8,000 by 4,000 pixels. But if you want to do some close-ups of a country or something, you can open this 128 megapixel comp, which uses 16,000 by 8,000 maps. So quadruple the resolution. And both of these are HD comps, uh, but you can change these to 4K or whatever you want in the Composition Settings panel. Just do Command-K or Control-K to open that up. So I'm going to go over how this comp is set up and how to customize it with the controls. But before I do that, I want to show you this folder real quick. Animations from demo video. Uh, these are the 4K comps for the nine animations you saw in the demo video. These are all just variations of the Earth comp that we just looked at, but uh, with camera movement and different settings. So you can drop a title into these or uh, render them as they are, or use them as a starting point to make your own animation. Uh, just don't upload these animations to stock footage sites if you're a stock contributor uh, because I've already done that. All right, uh, back in my main Earth Comp, let's just go down through all of these layers and I'll show you all the most important things to know. And then I'll come back up to this Earth Control layer and we'll go over the, the customization controls. So first, uh, you can unhide this Instructions layer if you want to read that. Um, also note these comments on every layer, uh, so I can, I can make this column really big and then expand a layer and there will be instructions or helpful tips related to that layer. Next we have the Earth Control layer, which if you select that and look in your Effect Controls panel, you'll see a whole bunch of controls uh, organized into categories. So you can adjust the Earth's position and spin, uh, the clouds and their shadows, you can adjust the lighting and you have separate controls for the water and the land and day and the land at night. And then you have controls for adjusting the atmosphere. Uh, we'll kind of run through these later, but uh, let's keep going through the layers. Next is the camera layer and uh, you'll probably want to animate your camera to add some movement. You can alternate camera tools by hitting the C key on your, on your keyboard and then you can just move your camera around. I'm not going to go into detail about the camera. There are lots of tutorials online about animating cameras. And uh, I will show you one thing. A lot of people will want to move their camera in an orbital movement around the Earth. So I'll show you the best way to do that. Um, we'll need the parent column. So I'll right click up here and go to Columns 
and choose parent and link. And uh, I'll parent this camera layer to the earth control layer. The earth control layer is just a null object and it's positioned at the center of the earth. So now I can animate the Y rotation of that control layer and it'll orbit the camera around. So next we have some yellow layers. Uh, the yellow layers are related to the sun or lighting. Uh, the sun is a light layer and I can type the P key to bring up its position and I can move it around and the lighting on the earth will update automatically. Perhaps an easier way to move the sun is to switch to top view and I'll zoom way out. So you can see our sun is here and our earth is these layers in the middle and this little dot here is our camera. And I can use the arrows on the sun to move it around. Uh, I'll go back to my active camera view. So now that the, the sun is in the frame, the sun doesn't actually emit any visible light. Uh, what we see is the lens flare. And this is just the built-in lens flare effect that After Effects has had for over 20 years. And if you're a veteran After Effects user, you're thinking, I wouldn't be caught dead using that thing. Which is why I've included 15 other lens flare options. Just go to the lens flares folder and I'm working in HD, so I'll open the HD Lens Flares comp. And then you can simply copy and paste any of these layers into your comp. And uh, the lens flare will automatically attach to your sun. Uh, these lens flares are taken from the Creation Lens Flares template from Creation Effects, which is a completely free template. Uh, you could go download it now. It's at creationeffects.com. No strings attached. Um, the template has 50 lens flares total, so uh, this is just a small sample and the great thing is these are customizable so let me just copy one to my comp and i could hide the original lens flare if i want but uh, i usually like to use them both combine them all right so if i go to my effect controls panel we have some controls for adjusting the lens flare um, these global controls will affect all the elements together and the reflection controls will affect only the reflections, uh, meaning the elements that are not attached to the light source here. So they move independently of the light source. So you can play with these controls. Uh, and if you want more customization options, just double click the layer and that'll open up the pre-comp. The pre-comps are all found in this folder, uh, lens flare pre-comps. In here, uh, you can see that each element is its own layer. And this one doesn't have that much. Let me pick a different one. Now, lots of elements here. Um, and every element has its own customization controls for adjusting just that element. So yeah, more customization than you'll ever want. And also, if you're working in, in some other resolution, not HD or 4K, just change the dimensions of this pre-comp in the composition settings panel and then you'll be good to go. I'll close that. Now a couple things to note about the lens flares. Uh, first, they always will appear over the earth. So if your camera is moving and the sun moves behind the earth, you'll need to keyframe the lens flares to turn off as the sun moves behind the earth. And you can do that with this global brightness control. Or if you're just using the standard lens flare, uh, there's a control on the Earth's control layer for that. A second thing to note is I noticed that After Effects was sometimes crashing and uh, I discovered the cause was the lens flare was positioned so far off frame that After Effects just couldn't process it anymore. So I got in the habit of, of trimming these lens flare layers at the parts where you couldn't see any lens flare reflections in the frame. And that way, After Effects won't try to render it, and uh, it'll make your comp run faster, too. Okay, next is this glow adjustment layer. This is not the standard glow effect that's built into After Effects. This is actually the Afterglow preset, which, again, is a 100% free download from creationeffects.com. It's a lot bigger and brighter and better than the normal glow. Um, you've got a bunch of controls here to customize it. And uh, this is totally optional. You don't have to use it. And actually, I mean, I've never seen a photo where the Earth glows like that. I just think it looks cool. 
Next, we have a bunch of green layers. Uh, these layers make up the Earth. And the first is this atmosphere, which you'll customize on the Earth control layer. But uh, you can experiment with the blending modes here if you want. Then we have the clouds layer, which you'll also customize through the Earth control layer. Um, there is one thing to point out here. There are three different uh, options for shadows for your clouds. You can't customize them through the control layer. So if you want shadows, you turn them on here. There's the color emboss, which is kind of like a bevel, uh, adding shadows and highlights. And you'll need to set up the direction manually, so just uh, make this point away from the position of your sun. And then there's radial shadow, which adds a drop shadow with perspective, meaning the shadows aren't parallel, but they're all cast from a single point. And again, you'll have to tell it where the sun is. So just use the point control here and click on your sun. And then the third option is for sunsets or when the sun is really close to the horizon and it produces lawn shadows. So you'll unhide this lawn shadows layer here and you'll set the center to match the position of your sun. And uh, you can adjust the length of the shadows here. And if you want, you can adjust the darkness or contrast with this levels effect. And a final tip on the clouds, sometimes uh, you can see through them, and so it might be a good idea to duplicate this clouds layer, and that'll make them denser. All right, next we have the land at night layer. Uh, this sphere has all the city lights on it, and you can see it's, it's overlaid over the main land sphere using the screen blending mode. And this layer is totally optional. You can hide it if you don't want to see the lights or decrease its brightness using the controls on the Earth control layer. And then we have our main land layer. I'll solo that. It has transparent areas where the ocean is so that we can see the ocean sphere underneath it. Um, there are separate spheres so that you can adjust their lighting and reflectiveness separately on the control layer. So next, these gray layers are the moon. If you want uh, the moon in your animation, just unhide this layer. You don't need to mess with this orbit control null at all. Uh, you can just go to the moon control layer here, and then you can use the controls to adjust the rotation, position, size, lighting, distance from Earth, all that. And uh, this one control, orbit and auto rotation, that will orbit the moon around the Earth while also rotating it to make sure that the correct side always faces the Earth. And you can use these other controls to adjust the angle of the orbit or offset its position. These blue layers at the end compose the background, which is actually made of six star images that you choose, and they form a giant 3D cube that surrounds the entire scene. And you can see the cube if I zoom out a little bit. Uh, these blue lines are the edges. The cube layers are all parented to this one background cube control layer. So if you scale that layer, you can scale the cube up or down, or you can rotate it, or whatever. Now, if you were to change this to 4K, and let me do that in the composition settings, now we can see more of the scene and we can see the edges and corners of our cube. And you can see no matter how much I scale up the cube, the edges are still in view. Because as I scale it up, the, uh, this back wall of the cube is moving further and further back. Um, the problem is our angle of view. It's just too wide. So you would need to go to your camera and open up your camera options and increase the zoom. Now, uh, seeing those corners or edges isn't necessarily a problem. Obviously, we don't see any seams um, with this star image that we're using, but you might with some of the other images. So uh, let's change the image. If I double click any of these cube layers, it opens up the pre-comp, and you can just unhide any of these layers, or even combine them if you want by changing the blending modes. And uh, a few of these might not be perfectly seamless, um, like this nebula is not at all tileable. So what you could do is double click this rectangle tool up here to add a mask around the whole layer. 
and then use the mask feather tool and bring in the edges. And uh, it doesn't really need to be so bright. And I could combine this with the stars image. So now you wouldn't see any seams, um, but you can still see some subtle nebula. All right, that covers how this comp is set up. Let me just quickly go through the customization controls. Um, I'll go to my earth control layer and uh, radius is, this one's already set at the optimal setting um, to get the most detail. So basically this is at 100% scale and it won't help to scale it up any further. So if you want a close up, you can just zoom in or move your camera closer. Um, the earth is at the center of the scene but you can offset that here. And by the way, I, I wouldn't move or mess with any of these layers down here until you've gone through these controls because it's better to make all your customizations on the control layer here to keep everything functioning correctly. And uh, if you can't do what you want with these controls, then knock yourself out. Uh, you can edit these layers. All right, so rotation, uh, you can manually rotate the earth or just set the rotation speed and the earth will spin automatically. And next to the cloud controls, height is like radius, but for the clouds only. Uh, it's a way to add some 3D separation between the clouds and the land. And uh, kind of accomplishing that same thing, we have a, a separate rotation speed for the clouds. So this one just rotates the land, and then you'll have to set this one as well to, that, to the same speed or maybe slightly more if you want the clouds to go a little bit faster, uh, which can add a sense of depth. Um, in the animations I've seen online, people way overdo that and the clouds spin too fast. So don't be like them because you're better than that. It should be so subtle that you don't even notice it. And I'd say even more subtle than, than what I did in my animations because I, I wanted people to see that it could be done. Anyway, this uh, cloud density control, that will let you see more or less of the clouds. That one's pretty handy. And let's move on to the lighting controls. Uh, the light angle updates automatically when you move your sun. But if your sun is not going to be in your shot, it's probably easier to just adjust the angle here with the controls. And you've got your sun brightness control here. Uh, this one controls the brightness of the lens flare. So this is the one you'll need to keyframe uh, to go down to zero whenever the sun moves behind the earth. And uh, there's also this control for adjusting the exposure of the background stars. And then this uh, brightness and shade control. This one might be a little confusing. It affects the brightness of the shadow side of the earth, but it only affects the land day and the water layers. It doesn't affect the clouds. There's a, a separate control for that up here in the cloud controls and it doesn't affect the night lights. And, and there's a separate brightness control for the night lights down here under land at night. And you can see there are some other groups of controls here for customizing just the water and just the land at day. And lastly, the, the atmosphere controls, these are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there's separate controls for the inner and outer glows. My only advice uh, if you're going for realism is to keep that outer glow really thin. The atmosphere is much thinner than what's usually portrayed in animations. Uh, if you don't care about realism and, and you just want it to look cool, uh, remember you've got this optional glow adjustment here to make the atmosphere really pop. All right, that is the end of today's show. Uh, I'll let you get to work. Remember, Solaris and the whole Space Effects collection is available at uh, creationeffects.com and a lot of free tools for After Effects as well as some really unique and cool templates like Landscaper, which uh, lets you create custom 3D landscapes in After Effects, any kind of landscape from beaches to jungles, to deserts, to mountains, to oceans. Also check out Creation Trippy Effects, which is a huge collection of psychedelic or trippy animations that you can customize, uh, as well as a bunch of trippy effects for your footage. There are a lot of effects for making custom animal animations, like schools for creating schools of fish, or swarms for creating swarms of insects, or flocks for creating flocks of birds, or the beast series for making land animals like horses and elephants and wolves. I have a recent one called Shapeshift, and that one will let you 
create some really cool 3D transitions. There's Micro for creating realistic microscopic animations. And also Creation Artifacts, which is a collection of about 50 stylized art looks for your footage. So you can convert your footage to just about any medium. Those and a whole lot more fun effects at creationeffects.com. Okay, I'm done. Have a great day.